Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for watching, tuning in, listening, do whatever you're doing, however you're doing it. Yes, guys, today, <laughs> that was a weird transition. I was, I, my mind was on something else, <laughs> but I had to keep talking. Yeah, yeah. And then you just kind of stop. It's okay. <laughs> Things happen, guys. Welcome. Welcome yeah. back to the show. Get in contact with us. Links are in the places that you know that they are. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was well said. Uh, guys, today we are going to round out uh, the three sort of episodes that we are finishing up now with yeah. the deck builder tips. Um, and this sort of applies yeah, to both idea. limited and constructed, but we sort of stated in the other videos some apply more to others. But sure, um, today we're going to talk about focusing your deck. Yeah. and why it's important to have a focus deck. We also, of okay. course, have our card of the day starting us off, and then our question of the week and our crack of packs. So um, we also want to mention we've been releasing one-off videos occasionally, usually on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Right. Um, I know we released a game last week, which was mm -hmm. hilarious. It was loads of fun. Flavor Fanatic. That Lots was really fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you like that, let us know, because we would like to keep up some games yeah. and do stuff like that, just as, you know, fill our content and fun stuff, because ah, yeah. it is really fun. Um, we also have our card spotlight, which may or may not already be up. Haven't um, decided yet. Haven't decided yet. <laughs> yeah, sure. we're going to see how that one goes. If, if it's if it's already up on Tuesday, how'd you like it? Yeah. If it comes out tomorrow, uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, so we do have a lot of other content coming out now. And uh, so we hope you enjoy that stuff. We hope you like it. Um, but oh, yeah. without further ado, let us get into this episode with our random card of the day coming at you in three, two, one. Boneyard ah. Worm. I actually love this card. I do too. I um, it. So it is one in a green for a creature worm uh, with no defined power and toughness because Ooh, Boneyard Worm's power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Yep. Uh, this was originally printed in Innistrad, so mm -hmm. uh, Innistrad being one of the premier best sets of Magic, uh, I think, pretty unanimously. Uh, yeah. Um, and Hard this is a really, it. really great card. Uh, in Limited, it was very strong. I actually saw a lot of uh, Innistrad back drafts if that makes sense like flashback drafts is what i was thinking of ah, okay and yeah. um boneyard worm is actually a really really good creature because it's so all you really need are like two creatures in your graveyard to make it on curve right it's a two two at that point for two which is great. fine that's just, that's just a vanilla bear at that yeah point. if you draw a late game you have three or four creatures it's now a three three or a four four for two for it's two. like okay that yeah. seems pretty good so yeah, it's nice it's a really really good limited card mm -hmm. um in addition i also want to point out that a long time ago, one of our first episodes, we talked about our first decks that yeah. we made. Yours was the Exalted deck, I believe. Yeah, it was. And mine was the Mill deck. And I mentioned in that episode that I used to play with a friend of mine who built a blue-green, mostly oh, green yeah. deck. This was like one of his best creatures in that deck because he was against a Mill deck, you know, made sense. But I can see why. It was really good. It would get yeah. huge. I'm talking Quage. massive. Um, it, it's, yeah. So, These yeah. guys pop out. <laughs> um, there's a really cool thing that's fun to build around, um, of, like filling your own graveyard with things to use them. Yeah. Uh, it came back big in Ravnica. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, in Return to Ravnica, in that standard season, Innistrad was still in. Mm -hmm. And this got, this saw play with like, uh, Gerard, uh, Grizzly Salvage, all yeah. sorts of stuff like that. That deck was really strong. Yeah. And then it got improved when Night Howler came out in. Yes. Um, Night Howler was great. In Theros. Theros. Back when people were excited about Theros for a week. Uh, <laughs> Never lasted. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah, about two weeks there. Um, yes, but this card is awesome. That that flavored deck is very cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, you can say I'm losing, but... <laughs> Swing for 15? Yeah, yeah. It's great. Uh, I love it's a really good card, card, yeah. And the art on it is fantastic, too. Oh, it's Which solid. hopefully you have seen on the screen, if I remember to make that edit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so <laughs> I really post. like this card. I'm happy to see this, because it's just a really strong uncommon. Um, yeah. For, for the podcast listeners, it's like a spiny worm. It's like a worm with spikes. <laughs> worm with spikes. Hope that helps. <laughs> you got this. Uh, that's every worm <laughs> in magic history. Um, yes, yeah, so very cool card of the day. Yeah. Um, but with that out of the way, we do want to talk about focusing your deck. Right. Um, and basically what we mean by this on sort of a general stance before we jump into specifics is basically when you're building a deck, it's really easy to get caught up in I want my deck to do this, this, mm -hmm. this, this, this. And the list just continues on. You end up with like 
three pages of things that your deck could do yeah. and it's like nah, it's not really a good thing like you think about it in terms of a good thing when you're building it because it's like oh well i can win this way and i can win this way because you have so many of them you're probably not going to win at all <laughs> that's yeah. sort of how it ends i think up. honestly with what we just talked about boneyard worm is a good example yeah. of kind of segue into it so you talk about the deck with gerard with night howl or boneyard worm you want to fill your graveyard with creatures. Mm -hmm. You use Grizzly Salvage to put creatures in your hand and in the graveyard so you can use the things you want to use. Yep. You have pitch effects like that. Gerard, you sack creatures to basically fling them at people, mm -hmm. pumping other creatures. All of that is sweet. All of that makes sense. Would it make sense to have a lot of Elvish Mystics in there? No. Probably not. <laughs> even though Elvish Mystics is a good card, would it make <clears throat> sense to have Bop, even though Bop is a good card? No. No. What about um, cards like Giant and Growth? Yeah, no. Not at all. <laughs> Giant Growth is a flexible combat trick, and it, I mean, it doesn't really see constructive play, but even so, um, a better example might have been the uh, target creature fights another creature. You Prey know? upon. Sure, cards like that. It still kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's not forwarding your main strategy, exactly. and that's really what you want. You sort of, basically when you build a deck, you end up with, in my mind at least, sort of two classifications of cards. One of which being cards that are forwarding your own strategy. Yeah. So the example I think when we talked about this before we recorded that I used was in bling. <laughs> wow, bling. I was gonna, making a combination between black and green. In bling constrictor. I love that. That was great. No, black green constrictor in standard for a while. Uh, in the bling constrictor. The deck. <laughs> my, my green black pink deck. Yes. <laughs> Um, the whole point of the deck was to get out all these creatures, throw some 1-1 one -one counters around, and swing in for the win. It was sort of a mid-range deck. Mm -hmm. And that was the strategy. So Constrictor was forwarding that strategy. Right. Virtuous Gearhulk was forwarding that strategy. Mm -hmm. Those cards would sort of be fitting into that first category. The second category is sort of cards that not aren't necessarily forwarding your strategy, but helping your deck react to the opponent's deck. And yeah. so things like Fatal Push, a lot of removal falls into that category. Any sweepers, things like that, those fall into that category that help protect your actual strategy. Right. I think m the majority of decks need cards like that, right? Yeah. Um, your Unless control you're decks are basically a all. dedicated combo deck. Well, that's the thing, is dedicated <laughs> combo decks are completely different. Yeah. Um, but most decks that want to win on the board or with a certain creature or something like that, mm -hmm they need cards to answer their opponent. Yeah. But you, you'll you find it's never like, I have 15 removal spells. No, no, or no. Or I have even 10 removal spells. You'll have maybe six. Yeah. Eight. Six to eight. Eight is like... Generally. Eight's sort of the max. Yeah. I mean, unless you're like a control deck, and that's where you get into different archetypes right. because, um, you know, a mid-range deck, it is very, this is my main strategy and these cards help me get there. The yeah. other cards help protect it. Uh, control is kind of that way, but a lot more focused on the protecting myself kind sure. of strategy because sure. it's here's this counter spell, here's this you know removal spell. There's a lot of that packed into it. The only yeah. cards that really forward your strategy in a control deck are the draw spells and things like that that just sure. help you dig through your deck because that's what you're trying you to do. You just want to find the thing. You just want to find your bomb and find yeah. your answers. Um, and then your bomb obviously is your win con, right? That's right. that's how you finish it out. Um, with combo decks they're their own sort of thing of where course. they're on the far side where they don't have any reactive cards really yeah. i mean you look it depends obviously what format you're in because a lot of uh you know combo decks like storm and things like that will have force of wills and legacy and stuff but speaking in terms of modern especially you see a storm deck it's all just a storm deck it's let me draw a bunch of stuff yeah. and then let me storm that's have you, it have you ever seen like <laughs> i don't know bolt in a storm deck really no no because really. it doesn't forward the strategy and right. bolt is a good example in a storm deck of a card that i've fallen into the pitfall of like well i need removal in my storm deck for some reason so let me throw some lightning bolts in there right and then you draw a lightning bolt and you're like well this doesn't help me at all <laughs> like yeah. it just doesn't do anything if i had if your bolt was say an, a grape shot or mm -hmm. empty or some storm card your payoff storm card or if it was a uh, uh, dark ritual, yeah, or pyretic ritual, like if it was that one other card, it could have it been could have thing, done something, but but then it wasn't, yeah. And that's kind of a, a lazy argument to say, right? If your card was the thing you needed, then it'd be good. 
but but in deck building that's why deck building is such an important part of yeah, the I, process right yeah. like that's why you have to take time and effort to deck build yeah um, one great question is if i in what situation would i want to draw this card and then how many times do i think i'm going to run into that situation yeah so that's thinking about your metagame a lot too. So when you take things like Fatal Push in, for example, mm -hmm. why well, it gets played in so many decks right now, especially in modern. Uh, am I going to see Death Shadow? Probably. Pretty likely. Am I going to yeah. see a lot of cheap creatures? Like? Goblin Guides, things like that. Goblin Guide, Geist, uh, Shadow. Um, I lost the other one. Uh, uh, Scavenging Ears, Tarmglut. These cheap guys that... You're going to run into them. You're probably going to want like, that. Probably going to want that over bolt or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um that's actually why you don't see bolt in modern that much right now. Not right. that you just don't see it, but it's like it's not used in it's like become, control decks as much because it's not actually as good as the other answers. It's kind of in the the background. It's in yeah. the shadow of uh fatal push. <laughs> oh yeah. I was gonna say death shadow, but that yeah, kind of didn't make any didn't sense. Really work. Uh <laughs> all that to say, um so you take what was I going? Uh fatal push on the one hand. And you put cards like, oh, uh, what was the really big counter spell we were looking at before? The two blue X pitch a... Uh, disrupting Shoal. So Disrupting Shoal. It seems like a great counter, right? Yeah. Pitch a card from your hand if it's got XCMC and counter a card with XCMC. But how many times are you actually going to like use that? Yeah, right? yeah. Yes, it's a controlling spell. Yes, it's a counter spell, but... But there are better, more lucrative ones out there. Right. And that's why, like, so for instance, Spell Snare is a really refined counter spell. It's a very efficient counter yeah. spell when you're countering something at two mana. Yep. Any other time, it is a 100% dead card. Yes. <laughs> so, like, that's you have to think too. about it as, like, Mana Leak might be a better option mm -hmm. because it's useful more throughout more turns in the yep. game than a Spell Snare or something like that. While it can't be a turn one counter spell. Turn two up to like turn five, it's probably going to be pretty useful, potentially even Absolutely. further on, depending on what decks you're against, things like that. So, mm -hmm. it's it's sort of weighing your options and focusing the strategy to find the best cards for that strategy that are going to forward your game plan yeah. or protect your game plan. But the idea of having so many game plans shoved into one deck, having no way to protect them because you have no card slots left, that's when you get into trouble. And I've done this a lot on in just kitchen table magic. As have I. Yeah. Where, because we do this occasionally, we haven't for a while, we need to again, where we just pick random colors and build decks yeah. and just fight it out. And we usually go for some like weird, not like super well, well established strategy. Yeah. For example, I tried to build an America <laughs> mentor slash Soulfire Grandmaster burn deck. Yeah. Which in theory sounds so cool. All of my burn has payoff. Yeah. It's got lifelink now, and it makes a guy. Whoa. But it was doing too much. It was doing way too yeah. much. Grandmaster didn't really need to be in there, or no. Mentor didn't need to be in there. One of the two. Like, pick one and go with it. Pick one and go with it, yeah. yeah. And then do you really need to make it blue also? Like, yeah, is get, it really forwarding that? no burning blue, but I had guard draw. <laughs> and that's the thing. That's a good example of a deck where you shove just a little bit too much into it. A lot too much. Yeah. Um, And I think the deck I played against you at that point, was it the green-red Cascade deck? Was that the one? I don't think that was the one. That deck that was time. sweet. It was really good. That was an example of a focus deck oh, where yeah. it was literally, you it used... was just Gruul aggro, yeah. but it was Bloodbraid Elf. It was Violent Outburst. Yep. It was Burning Tree Emissary. So I just like pumped out tons of stuff. Just play Violent your, outburst, get more stuff. <laughs> play your board, cascade into free things, yeah. then pump your board all by one, but there's 20 of them, so who cares? Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was very, very And good. that was the focus. That was yep. what the deck needed to do, and it actually worked mm -hmm. out really well. Yep. And so that's sort of on the other end of things. What what works is when you pick that strategy and you just go for it. Yeah. Um, that being said, you do need ways to protect your strategy. That's an important part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless you're just an all-in deck and that's what you hear that term a lot uh when people talk about combo decks or very very focused decks where this is a very all-in strategy this is a very sure. all-in deck and you wonder okay that's that it's clearly moving forward with that strategy but why is it so all-in and it's because 
the the deck and the brew that they put together doesn't really care too much about the opponent. It's just caring about what it's doing. Yeah, it's, that's what that means. Like, go, gold fishing is that term. Yeah. Um, you see this less and less in standard because you get less and less and less options. Yeah, less combo stuff yeah. to do. Um, however, in modern and then going further back, legacy and vintage, you mm. really see the combo decks, the dirtle decks, kind of do their thing. Yeah, coming to stride. Uh, Doomsday comes to mind storm comes to mind where it love doomsday <laughs> we, we had a discussion about doomsday. how good doomsday is anyway <laughs> um I, I still hold that if it's a good deck that doesn't make doomsday a good card okay but like good is so subjective wasn't that our second episode what makes a card a what good makes card? a card good i think that was up there as one of our first we might have which to... is we may need to revisit i was good i was just <laughs> gonna say that um jeez. Oh, i do also want to point out you mentioned legacy and vintage mm-hmm. uh especially vintage is sort of an exception to the super focus rule yeah um that's not to say the decks are not super focused that's not what i'm saying however you do see decks that are like here's my mentor deck I also just threw Tinker in there because it's good. And that's yep. normal in Vintage because you only need two or three cards to make a combo good in Vintage. Yeah. Whereas with Modern or something like that, you have to dedicate the deck to make the, the combo good. That's, that's just how yeah, it works. Definitely. So. Where in, in Tinker, you get to say, do I have a Mox and Tinker? Wow, all of a sudden I have a Dark Steel Colossus. Yeah. That's cool. Seems like that's a good way to win. Huh. That's nice. That's good. Yeah, so um, that was, I mean, I don't think I had too much else to say on it other than when you are deck building, whether it is for casual or competitive, make sure that you stick to a strategy Mm -hmm. and figure out exactly how you can make that strategy work before you go trying to shove other strategies in. Um, Definitely. It's generally not a good idea to do too many different things. Yeah. And if somebody mentions a toolbox deck, I forgot about this. Somebody mentions a toolbox deck, a toolbox deck is not trying to vary its strategy. It just has answers for everything. <laughs> That's what a toolbox deck does. <laughs> True. Its strategy is really just to wait. Yeah. Win. It's, hey, what do I need for this situation? It's a control deck that has a bunch of toolbox cards. That's sort of what it is. When you say toolbox cards, what are you saying? So, okay, a toolbox card meaning, like, the classic example that comes to mind is Mystical Teachings as, like, the classic toolbox deck because it can fetch instants or sorceries. And so what you can do is... Just do a bunch of one of instances or sorceries that sort of match different situations. So say you need a board wipe. Sure. Throw in Supreme Verdict. Throw in a Damnation. Throw something like that in. Say you need a really good spot removal card that exiles specifically. Okay. Because it can't be just destroyed. So I need Path. You need Path. You need Sword of Supply Shares. You need something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Say you need a card that shuts off uh, Graveyards, Graft Digger's Cage. Just... I mean, Mystical Teachings doesn't get that, but you get the idea. Like, you just sure. throw one ofs in this deck that turns off other stuff. Yeah. And then when you find out what you're against, you fetch the card you need. <laughs> like, that's that's ideally what a toolbox deck is. So it's not... That's sort of focusing on the reactive side of things, so not forwarding your main game plan, but, like, focusing on what the opponent's doing and just trying to answer that a lot. Yeah. Like, that's sort of all it's doing. Yeah. And then finding its win in the end because it's, at heart, a control deck. You know? Which seems very good. Uh, where toolbox decks suffer are against decks that dirtle, that just do their thing and kind of win. Yeah. Um, a lot of also, a lot of fast decks also mm-hmm. aren't... Because you don't have time to fetch and play whatever right. you're trying to do. And so if they're winning on turn two or three, it's like, well, that sucks. <laughs> really, they control, like, the mid, <clears throat> mid game, the yeah. mid-tier game. So if the deck is too fast, it's not good. If they can't touch the deck until later, it's kind of scary. Yeah. Um, yeah. Toolbox decks are, in theory, like you, you, you'd you say all that. Oh, they just have all the answers? They must be so good. And mm. they are good, but they're stronger the further back you go. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of the they, inevitability argument, right? Like, exactly. They have a lot of inevitability, but they have to get to the late game to really make that happen. Right. And in younger formats, modern and standard specifically, you don't really toolbox decks don't get to shine just because there's not all those answers in one spot. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about with focusing decks? Hmm. No, 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 I'm satisfied. Um, (laughs) I'm really excited that we have our own mics, by the way, guys, this is the, this is a new thing for us. This is our first episode with the two mics. 
No, I mean, technically, yes, yeah, it's the though. first podcast episode. But for those of you really on the podcast app, um, if anybody has actually watched the YouTube videos, we usually have one singular mic mm-hmm. here, and that's it. In the middle of us. Yeah, and so we have to like lean over kind of and... enjoy each other's company a little too much. And so yeah, what we I thought we would guy. do, yeah, it's really... It's it's tough to get through these. It's for we are we're the married parents who are here for you kids. And yeah, we're not getting divorced till you go to college. So go to college, kids. You, um, you better get good grades. Um, <laughs> I need that money to pay for the divorce. <laughs> um, Daddy but yes, yeah, we recently upgraded our interface slash microphone package. Um, the audio itself may not be edited quite as well yet because this is still still a little new to us. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. That being said, we do have individual mics, which means Ain't it we can talk in a sultry kind of way. I mean, I guess we could before, but it was weird. Yeah, we had to do it. Like really you don't want to press your face against face. someone else's face and try to talk sultry. No. <laughs> sort of sets a whole different tone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we weren't really going for. Um, all right, so moving on. Moving on <laughs> to the question of the week. Uh, one of my favorite segments, actually. I really enjoyed this. All you right. guys, all as always, have shown fantastic support. Um, this we past post, question. By the way, we post all of these on Instagram and yes. Facebook. I think they go to Facebook as well, yeah. Me and too. technically Twitter, I guess. But yeah, they kind of go everywhere. Right? Guys, we have a Twitter. <laughs> Just go hang out. I made Twitter. it and I forgot about it. Yeah, that was your job. It was my job. Guess who posts on Twitter? I do through Hootsuit. <laughs> Hootsuite? <laughs> it's not Hootsuit? No. Bet you dollar it's suit. I promise you it's not. Anyway, all right. So the question of the week for this past week is what card should not have been banned? Uh, so out of the ban list in any format, could have been Commander to Vintage. What? I don't think. Is anything actually straight up banned in Vintage? Uh, yeah, there mm. are. There's a few. There's a yeah. few. Um, what cards should not have been banned? Uh, so we do have our first, second, and third place winners for this. Nice. And third place, we only have one card. That you will never guess. <laughs> really? I just don't think you'll guess this. Give me a format. I honestly don't know because it's... I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this one. It's the 1995 World Championship card. Oh! You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It got two votes. It's That's just silly. But yeah, you would never... <laughs> there's no way you would guess that. I would not have. Not in... No, in never. second place, with three votes each, we have three different cards. Oh, man. Two of which are... I'll give you formats. Two of which are in modern. Okay. One of which is Commander. Flash Hulk. Okay. Probe. Okay. And... Twins. Splendy Twins. Splinter Twin. All right. You got Splinter Twin. Okay. Uh, Also Blood Braid for modern. Wrong. Yeah, I think Blood Braid should have been banned. (laughs) Boys and girls. Let me tell you about Blood Braid Elf. It's good. (laughs) Uh, It's too good. Yeah. Okay. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, And then also for Commander, Prophet of Crufix. I forgot that was banned in Commander. Yeah, isn't it? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't play enough Commander to know if it's, like, ridiculously good. I feel like it would be ridiculously good. It's but. it's pretty solid. Um, it's pretty solid. Yeah. But just as, like, an engine card. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, I get that. And not everyone can play it, which is kind of the argument against Soul Ring. Because Soul mm-hmm. Ring is the same way. as It's so good. It's such good utility. But, sorry. No, you're good. My, my thought box. I'll All right. In percent. first place, we have two cards, each with five votes. And they are both in modern. Then it's definitely probe. Birthing pot? No, although that was on the list. Uh, mm. You're right with probe. Okay. The other one is Stoneforge Mystic. Which oh. I think is interesting. Okay, let me tell you why that one should be banned. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know if it if it was unbanned now. I think at the time it needed 100% to be banned. Uh. Yeah. I think now if it was unbanned, I would be interested to see how it would go. Because I think, obviously, it's a good card. I don't think... There's in, there's no question that it's an amazing card. But would it be good enough? Because it's not like you see the swords played in modern. The only reason you don't is because you, you don't because have Because you don't have stone for it. You think that if you unban, you'd see the swords more often? I do. You get to equip them for free. Yeah. Um, And the swords are much slower without that free equip, right? Yeah, They're basically true. turn three. Well, and essentially, what you get, too, is... Uh, white weenie toolbox deck exactly speaking of toolbox decks exactly. is spe- decks is 
I mean, toolbox of decks because um, you can fetch whatever sword most applies to the deck you're going against if you have them in your main deck, and then you just kind of went off of the pro. Yes, like the swords Pretty are nice. the swords are so strong. Yeah. Um, and Stoneforge gets to throw them on anything for free. That's, yeah. that's busted. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, I still would be interested to see how things went. It's sort of the Jace complex. Like if we unban Jace in modern, what would happen? I really don't think that much would happen. With Stoneforge or Jace itself? Like with- Jace, definitely. I think Stoneforge maybe a little more would happen, but I'd be interested to see I, how much. I think you can make a deck around Stor- Stoneforge faster than you could around Jace. Yeah, for sure. Only because Stoneforge fetches something that wins. Yeah. Well, yeah. interesting. Um, so the question for this week that has already been posted, um, what is the best one-mana instant spell? Um, and this can be in any format or anything like that. It could be just casual. But what is the best instant speed one drop? Have any thoughts? I mean, my heart goes to unsummon, but that's not <laughs> that's not the right Mine's one. Mine's electricery, yeah. <laughs> Unsummon's only good in limited, and it's electricery like, is good everywhere, but you know, <laughs> except for magic tables. <laughs> um, that's not true. It's okay. It's so like so, uh, I have my vote, but. I think it might actually get a few votes, so I also don't want to like say it out loud. It might be swords for me. Swords of Plowshares? Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. I know that yours I know what yours is. Yeah. But I have a couple arguments for I mean, it is could be considered. one of the only ones that is ever banned. If yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It is. Okay. Then yeah, okay, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Should I I mean <laughs> I don't know. All right, we'll let you guess. Stay that. tuned. Yeah. Next week's episode wink um all right guys hmm. moving off of the question of the week we do have our crack a pack sponsored i was gonna say sponsored in part by and then i was like no actually just sponsored by Wait, this isn't pbs this kids. isn't pbs kids do you remember that sponsored in part by um no but McDonald's. uh these are sponsored by grand slam comics and collectibles in rock hill south carolina uh just under 30 minutes from charlotte so if you're in charlotte oh, yeah, north carolina this, go down 77 and you'll find it um but yeah they have done so much for us so we really do appreciate it with that we do have our goal cards uh what's your goal card uh my goal card is the carnage tyrant yes so i like my big green scary lizards big green scary lizards are good mine is it lamak the new uh new guy is new guy's cradle um which i didn't get i got primal amulet which is a cool card but not for uh limited do I care? Yeah. I don't like that. Hmm. What What did you get? Sorry, I got Waker of the Wilds. Uh, three, three for four. Uh, Merfolk Shaman, it says, pay X, colorless, and two green. Put X plus one plus one counters on target land you control. Land becomes a zero, zero elemental creature with haste, still a land. Um, I kind of like that card. What? I kind of like that card. I do too. It's I like a mana it. sink. Exactly. I like it especially for limited. Uh, gives you, you know things to use your mana on yeah. and your lands yeah later in the game so, is that your pick you think i think it kind of has to be yeah just because i mean it's really solid yeah it's utility late game it's you get a you get a fat guy late game let's say i haven't drawn my other bomb yet mm-hmm. i just turn one of my forests into a six six and there you go seems good yeah that's not bad i think it has to be waker i also have good removal and legion's judgment it is target uh creature with power four or greater which is very skimming I mean, it hits a lot there's, of dinosaurs. There's a lot. I was going to say, there's a lot of dinos and bombs there. Yeah. Thrasher of Raptors is a good four drop. Yeah. I've got Kumini's Speaker. Also got one of those, which I do like. That oh, card's nice. awesome. But I do too. Uh, an island or another merfolk? Heck yeah. Yes, please. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What'd you get, bud? Uh, so, again, my rare was Primal Amulet, so I'm not going to pick that. Um, cards that I like. I got Fire Cannon Blast, which is just good removal. Stormfleet Arsonist, which is sort of a good late game. Not like Super Bomb, but it, it's actually pretty good. River Sneak is a good card in the Merfolk deck specifically. And then uh, Ranging Raptors, which mm. is good ramp in the Dinosaur deck. Um, personally, I kind of like the Arsonist. Uh, it has Raid. It's a 4-4 four, for four, 5. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, target opponent sacks a permanent. Oh, baby. Um, so, like, no matter what, you're going to set them back a little bit uh, because y- you would only play this in a deck where you're going to raid most turns. So, 
I really like that. I think that it. I think maybe the safer pick would be Fire Cannon Blast, just because it's three damage target creature. Yeah. And six damage if it, if you do trigger raid, which will not wheel at all. But I don't know. I I would try the Arsonist. I think. I would too. My one argument is at five mana, you play it, they sack a land. Yeah, like, and that's the thing. It's not like you know you may not get the best value out of it. It's not overpowering in that, but yeah. I mean they're still down a turn. In yeah, mana, exactly. Which is not, and it's a four four then. Yeah, it's a it's board. a substantial body. Yeah, with yeah, that's nice. So yeah, cool. Well, thank you again to Grand Slam as always for sponsoring these packs. We do appreciate it. Many thanks. Many thanks. Um, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. Kind of it's kind of a shorter today, one, yeah, but, uh, just over thirty minutes. But we do hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully, you learned a little bit. Again, this is wrapping up our sort of deck builders tip series yeah. for now. It was sort of just a little thing that we decided to do last minute yeah it wasn't really meant to be a series but turned out to be one so um next week back to the normal shenanigans you did miss your mouth mouth. happens a lot um (laughs) guys we are gonna get out of here thank you so much for watching if you like this episode make sure to like comment or subscribe to our channel uh subscribe to us on the podcast app or go like our website and all that jazz all the social media you good yeah all right um, but with that, we are going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. I need a towel. <laughs> I mean, my name's Will. This has been It Resolves. <laughs>